wanted to play three different scriptures, not just this one. Many Christians take this particular passage from 2 Corinthians 6 and apply it almost exclusively to the issue of engagement, dating, marriage. That believers should not be emotionally attached to or romantically involved with non-believers. We should not date them, court them, marry them, etc. That is very true. But if you look at the exegetical context, it is not specific to that or limiting itself to that. It simply says, do not be bound together with unbelievers. It is a general truth. It is a general truth. What partnership have the righteous with the lawless? Remember, they are of darkness, we are of light. They are of death, we are of light. They are of Satan's kingdom, we are of the kingdom of God. We've been purchased at a high price. I would extend this to any kind of legal or financial partnership or involvement with unsaved people, Christian business people, need to be very careful of contractual relationships with non-believers, certainly business partnerships. It's an unequal yoking. Yes, it applies to marriage and things and dating and things of this, obviously, but it goes well beyond that. Whenever we get involved with the world, we need to have the Lord's guidance. As it says in Isaiah, 30 and 31. They go down to Egypt, the world, without consulting me. If you go to a lawyer, obviously, ideally, in an ideal circumstance, as a Christian lawyer would be preferred, but that may not always be possible. You need to have the Lord's guidance in going to the world's legal system and retaining the services of an attorney or a solicitor or a certified public accountant or a chartered accountant. You go to the world's health system, pray before you even swallow an aspirin. Before you talk to a physician or pharmacist, pray first. Never go to the world for help without having the Lord's leading and guidance. And he will never lead you into partnership with the unsaved. This is a general truth. Now it is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that speaks about being joined physically to, to, to an unsaved person and specifically a prostitute. Uh, again, it, it's like an act of, 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 of necromancy. They're dead, you're alive. What are you doing? You're defiling the temple of the Holy Spirit with, with someone who's spiritually dead. Um, to say nothing of, of, of the moral and legal ramifications of, of, of being in bed with a prostitute or something like this. Uh, that's the second scripture. So we're looking at Isaiah going to the world for help. We're looking at 1 Corinthians, where it deals specifically with the sexual aspects of this. And we are dealing with uh, the text itself in 2 Corinthians. But there's a final passage, the third major one. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Have no fellowship with any so-called brother. So-called brother. Who's a swindler. Uh, I remember when the late Oral Roberts said a 900 foot tall Jesus Christ appeared to him, demanding millions of dollars. And if he doesn't cough it up by the end of the month, Jesus is going to kill him. And he went on TV begging for money. Please send the money or Jesus is going to kill me. He's 900 foot tall. What does the world think when they see someone like this? And I know churches such as Melody Land in California, when I went there, who defended him and invited him to speak. This is absolutely sick and disgusting. These people like Jesse Duplantis and these money preachers, Benny Hinn and these people, and, and Kenneth Copeland, Oh, they're brothers! No, they are so-called brothers. So-called brothers have no fellowship with anyone who's a swindler. But Morris Sorello's Holy Ghost prayer cloths to take away debt being sold for $40? Sterling equivalent of 25 pounds at the time? We are to have no fellowship with such people, not even to eat with such a one. Now, in the context of the epistle, which is a very paschal epistle, 1 Corinthians. Not to eat with such a one doesn't mean if you see them in the pizza hut, don't go into the pizza hut. What it means is do not take the Lord's Supper with them. 
Do not accept them as communicants. They defile the Lord's table. They eat and drink judgment to themselves, have nothing to do with them. It is indeed an unequal yoking, but not based on this particular passage. It's based on 1 Corinthians chapter 5. That is why I quit Revelation TV in Great Britain. I had a very popular TV broadcast in Great Britain, and I just, and in Western Europe, and I just quit. I would not be on the same station or same channel with, with, with Jesse Duplantis and these people, and, 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 and him when I began bringing them back in. I just quit, and so did some other people. It's an unequal yoking in a different sense of the word to be associated with a so-called brother. So don't limit it to marital or dating relationships or anything like this. It includes that, but it goes beyond that. Secondly, remember, when it goes beyond that, it's talking about any kind of legally binding or financially binding relationships with the world. Becoming surety for an unbeliever, anything like this. You must not be become bound to unbelievers in a way that, that you can't extricate yourself. Thirdly, the aspect of being in bed with false teachers and false prophets, well, that is also wrong, but not based on this, based more on 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, and the final and latest one, Parpezzo, Parpezzo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Parpezzo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.